In my last video, I started to explore weathering techniques and I had to go at weathering a couple of wagons that I had recently purchased. I think they came out really, really well, but I wanted to expand on the techniques that can be used for weathering rust. Quite a few of you got back in touch and suggested two chipping techniques that I should try using some hairspray and some salt. So I'm going to have a go at these in this video and see how they turn out. Now, I didn't fancy weathering any more wagons this week, so I thought I would have a go at weathering a small metal tin shed that I'd made, scratch built, um, many years ago. It's just made from corrugated card, and I thought I would have a go at weathering this a little bit better than it looks just now. I decided to weather this piece in particular because I will be able to use it when I come to create the industrial area on my layout of Darlingborough. It will fit nicely in and I wanted to just make sure it looked really nice weathered and very worn. For both of these methods you still have to create an underlying layer of rust which will then be painted over and then that paint will then be chipped away using the two methods. For this demonstration I decided not to repaint it with a rust texture underneath as I was going to paint it over the top with a completely different colour. The first thing I decided to do was to give the model a quick spray with some clear matte varnish. This just protected any of the previous paint from washing off or being rubbed off. Once it had dried, using the help of my hairdryer, I then applied some water over the parts where I wanted some of the chipping to appear, just using a soft brush. The next stage was to apply some salt. Now I've found that using rock salt is probably the best type of salt for this because it is quite coarse and it provides quite large chips. I also decided to grind some up a little bit more finely so that I could have some smaller chipping as well. Now what I would recommend is if you're doing this leave the model to dry out overnight, preferably maybe on a radiator, something a bit warm so that it can really dry out and let the salt really adhere to the model. Now what I did was I gave it a quick blast with my hairdryer. Unfortunately it was a little bit too windy and it did blow some of the salt off. Once the model has dried the next stage is then to give it a spray with the colour that you want the outside to be. Now I'll be honest I was indecisive about whether to go for a green or for a silver so I've decided to try and mix a little bit of them both and just see how it comes out. To be fair it doesn't really matter but obviously if you have got a colour scheme in mind for the outside of the building then choose that particular colour. Again it doesn't really matter how you do it although I would recommend if you have got an airbrush to do that but if not you can just use a spray can and spray the model itself. I sprayed the coats liberally over everywhere that was covered with the salt. And then I proceeded to scrape the salt off. Now I will be honest, I was really impatient and I jumped the gun on pretty much every single stage of this test piece. I didn't allow the water and the salt to dry properly before I started spraying it with the airbrush and then in turn I didn't allow the paint that I'd sprayed on the airbrush to dry properly before scraping the salt back off and as you can see the results they're really really terrible they really do not look like chipping they look like just a massive mess of like washed paint so learn from my mistake if you are using the salt method give it time don't do what I do and rush it all. Leave enough time between each stage for the paint and for the salt to actually dry before moving on. Otherwise, you will end up with a really, really bad looking chipping effect. Now, I probably will revisit it. I'll give it a bit of practice, probably off camera, and see how it goes, and then probably come back to it. And if you are interested in seeing that, then by all means, drop me a comment down below, let me know. Um, obviously, I know what I've done wrong, so you don't need to say, oh, you didn't do this, or you didn't do that, because I know, I know what I did wrong. Um, I just didn't have the time or the patience, to be honest. 
but yeah. Anyway, I'm going to look at the hairspray method next. And I'm probably going to bodge that one up as well. So, here we go. With the hairspray method, rather than using another model, I just turned the model over and decided to do the other side. And then I can compare methods. So to start with, I give the model a fairly generous spraying of hairspray. And then gave it a quick blast with my hairdryer just to make sure that it's dry. I still had quite a bit of paint left over in the airbrush, so I decided just to use the rest of it up rather than wasting it. And gave the rest of the model a good spray with the green silver mix. Again, I wasn't particularly careful and I could have probably spent a lot more time on this to make sure that the paint was nice and even. However, this again being a test piece, it was just to see how it would work. Once I had finished spraying the model, I then made sure that I gave it a good dry using the hairdryer before applying a generous amount of water over the top layer. Now what happens is the water is supposed to dissolve the hairspray underneath the paint layer and then you can scrape it away. I left it for a few minutes for the water to kind of get under and then started to gently rub at some of the corners using a fairly stiff bristled brush. I spent quite a lot of time on this. Um, I didn't want to just rush through it. I wanted to spend a little bit of time and see if I can get a good effect. It did take me quite a while and quite a lot of rubbing with the stiff bristled brush to actually get through the top layer of paint and start to reveal the paint underneath. I'm not overly impressed with the final results. Now I could probably take a little bit longer, it might work a little bit better, um, but in the time scale that I had, I it's not wonderful if I'm honest. Now I will be honest, I'm not particularly bothered about this model, it's a piece of scratch built shed that it can be redone to be honest I'm not worried about it however if I was focusing on doing this on say a piece of uh, terrain or a model that I was actually quite careful about then I would like to have took the time and the effort and done it properly so to sum up I really have not had much success using either the salt method or the hairspray method of weathering. If you guys have tried either technique and you think that you know it is a good technique, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of these techniques. It might just be me being a complete amateur. I'm not an expert at weathering whatsoever. Um, this video is maybe more of a what not to do. Um, so hopefully you've learned something from my failure at weathering using these attempts and so you can go on and do something successful if you do by all means drop me a message uh, send me an email send me some pictures and let me know how you get on in the meantime don't forget to look out for some of these other videos i would recommend watching that one in particular for the competition